I've been playing the piano for over 20 years now and I realized that beyond understanding the very basic, the very surface levels of how a piano works, I'm quite clueless. So recently I decided to change that and I tagged down one of the best piano technicians I know. His name is Damon Groves and I asked him a bunch of questions. So this video will be organized by the questions I asked him, so I suggest that you use the timestamps that I will provide in order to navigate the different sections of the video. So without further ado, uh, here's the information and I hope it's as useful to you as it was for me. So I'm here with Damon and he's going to show us some things about pianos. <laughs> Okay, so the key, the key has a front rail mortise, a front rail bushing, it's got a key top, it's got key lead, it, it has a balance hole mortise, a balance hole, a uh, balance bushing, it has a capstan, the key end, the cushion has a jack, has a jack center, jack regulating screw, repetition lever, repetition spring, repetition center, repetition height adjustment, it has a let off button, a let off rail, a hammer rail, a hammer flange, a hammer shank, a knuckle, a hammer flange center. The hammer has the hammer felt and the hammer core. You have the back check and back check buckskin. You have the damper lever, damper weights. You have a damper cap stand. You have a sostenuto tab. You have a damper block, a damper screw, a damper wire, damper felt, damper head, and the drop screw. Something like that. <laughs> The key is one lever. The whippin is another lever, this black piece. And then your hammer and hammer shank is another lever. So there's basically three levers. The key, the whippin, and the hammer shank. So this brass capstan of the key pushes the whippin up which in turn pushes the hammer shank up towards the string. The voicing is essentially working with hammers and strings to better optimize sound. So you want clarity, projection and power, you want dynamic range, you, you want to have the triple P's and the triple F's and hopefully everywhere in between. And then there's also evenness. So you want to go from note to note or from, you know, bass to treble and have a, a balance and evenness. When you have the hammer that strikes the string, the flatter it is, the, the more issues you probably have with tone. It's not very clear. You don't have dynamics and a lot of times it becomes pretty harsh. One of the things that we do uh, is reshape the hammer and we use either strips like this of sandpaper, or we can use like files like this. And we're removing felt in order to sort of restore the original shape of the hammer because it's been distorted through playing. And sometimes I give it a little shoe shine. So that's shape, and of course, the hammer needs to be flat because when it strikes the strings, it needs to strike all three strings. Um, the other thing we do as far as voicing is needling. And so there are a lot of voicing tools that have, they look like torture tools, uh, needles. These are sewing needles, but it's in a, a tool and I can adjust the length of the needles. Some tools have one needle, some tools have, you know, six or seven. The felt, on a hammer is under a lot of tension and compression. It's the sort of natural design of the hammer. So if say we had a piano that was really harsh and bright, usually the hammer's too hard. And a way to solve that is to, to needle the hammer. So we can, uh, we can needle the hammer here in the lower shoulder or the battery. And what I'm doing is changing the, the tension and the closer and closer we get to what we call the strike point, which is where the hammer strikes the string, uh, the more drastic our needling becomes as far as tone. It's like almost giving the hammer a massage. If, if a hammer is too dense and too rigid, it doesn't 
uh, put its energy into the string. It'll basically just hit the string and rebound off the string. What you want is that hammer to sort of compress and then push energy into the string. That's where power is from. Power is not from like having something really hard. Mm -hmm. It's from having the proper energy being sort of transferred into the string. And you occasionally you'll break a needle <laughs> and you'll have to retrieve it from the hammer. Uh, effort. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> effort. So um, there, there's reshaping, there's needling, uh, there's fitting. So we're making sure that when this hammer strikes the string, it's striking all three strings at the same time. Most notes have three strings. Um, and there is, you could add chemicals or hardener. So if a piano wasn't dense, or sorry, if a hammer wasn't dense enough and didn't have enough tone built up and it was really muffled, you can add a chemical like lacquer or um, plastic dissolved in acetone and you can add it to the hammer. On top? Uh, it depends. You can add it right on top of the strike point, um, which will give you that attack. Mm -hmm. That's the immediate attack. Or you can, if the hammer is really soft and lacking some backbone, you can put the chemical in mm -hmm. the, the shoulders of the hammer, we call it. As you can see, I'm pushing the key down and the hammer is rising towards the string. Mm -hmm. But just before the hammer touches the string, it escapes right there. And that's crucial. If that didn't happen, the hammer would touch the string strike the string and then stay in contact with the string, which is not good. So there's some mechanism that creates this escapement or let off, we call it. Where it dips back down. Where it dips back down, yep. And if you do this on a piano, an upright or a grand, if you push the key down very slowly, you can feel that. You can feel the escapement. It's a mm -hmm. little bump, for lack of a better term. So the jack is actually pushing the knuckle up, which pushes the hammer up. The jack touches this, we call it a let off button, which causes the jack to pivot, which causes the hammer to escape or drop away from the string. Mm -hmm. and what about this part here? So at the end of the key. That's the end of the key, yeah. And that's called the key end felt. Mm -hmm. And its uh, job is to lift up the damper. Mm -hmm. So the damper obviously silences the string when it's not in use. Mm -hmm. But when you play the key, the back end of the key actually lifts the damper off the string. So the string is free to vibrate. And of course, when you let go of the key, the key end goes down, the damper lever goes down, and your damper then does its job and it dampens the string from vib vibrating. And in this picture here, yeah. where's the pedal? This uh, aluminum piece on this piano is called a damper tray, and it moves every single damper up and down. So mm. when you push the damper pedal, you are lifting every single tray. damper. With a tray. With a tray. So every damper is lifting off the string. Anywhere where there is some sort of felt or cloth, uh, the hammer, this hammer is like brand new, it has a nice shape to it. After thousands and thousands of repeated uh, playing, the top of the hammer will actually get flat. So when it hits the string so much, the shape of the hammer becomes flat on top. Mm -hmm. And you lose some clarity you probably have a harsher tone. Um, the knuckle also kind of flattens out because you see here it's being pushed up. So the knuckle gets flat. Um, How would you fix that? Would you replace it? You can replace knuckles, yeah. You can do some maintenance, but you can, you can replace knuckles, yeah. The hammers, you can put new hammers mm -hmm. on. If you file them and remove too much felt after years, you can put new hammers on, you can put new hammer shanks, new knuckles, you can replace whippings. Uh, this is a hammer rest uh, cloth, you can replace that. Um, and you see anywhere where there is a piece of cloth, mm -hmm. uh, it'll compress due to, to wear and tear. 
And so that's why making these adjustments here is really important as well. Regarding maintenance, what's the ideal temperature for a piano to live in and humidity level? So the, the ideal situation is in room temperature and somewhere around 40% humidity. The temperature is assuming it's, you know, not extreme, mm -hmm. like 30 degrees or 120 degrees, is not as important as humidity. Okay. Relative humidity. So, and depending on where you live and the seasons and the cycle, if you have really humid summers and really dry winters where the heat comes on, uh, that's an issue. It's mm -hmm. those seasonal e extremes that will really cause havoc on your piano. Okay. It'll cause your piano to go out of tune, it might cause structural issues because this instrument is mainly comprised of wood. Uh, get a hydrometer, that's a really good clue. It's, it's, um, it's a, usually a digital uh, readout of your relative humidity. Okay. So, hygrometer? Hygrometer. Hygrometer. Yeah. It'll tell you the temperature and humidity. Don't put your piano near like a heat register mm -hmm. or something that pumps out a lot of heat, a fireplace. Air conditioner? Um, I think that's okay, okay, only because, again, if the space isn't being, uh, usually it's heat sources that we worry about because they dry the piano out a lot. A radiator. Windows? Heat register. Windows, <clears throat> it's up and down. I mean, Depends. sunlight is, is one thing that doesn't affect the tuning and the stability as much. Mm -hmm. It might um, f fade the, the case, like if a okay. black piano, you'll start to get, after years, like faded, smoky look on, uh -huh. on certain things. Um, uh, something that I noticed in friends' apartments, mm -hmm. in small studio type apartments, where perhaps the kitchen is in an open space and the piano is in the other side of the room, yeah. but it's pretty close yeah. and they like to cook or they yeah. like to fry things, <laughs> it affects the air and it affects the piano. It does. If you boiling a big uh, pot of water for pasta or something uh -huh. like that, you're making that humidity like spike. Uh -huh. um, and I've seen some pianos that are kind of greasy and oily, like from yes. splatter. Like it's, you know, five feet away from the kitchen. Yeah. And it's a little gross. Which... I, I see the, the oil yeah. marks. Yep, yep. So there's a brass pin, the metal part, and then there's a cloth center around it. And it's like a hinge or a bearing. Mm -hmm. Those are where all the parts pivot. There's one here for the jack. And those also get worn out. They can get worn out. They can actually, they can uh, seize. They can be tight, mm -hmm. too tight. And that would cause the piano action to be heavier. Or they can be too loose and have too little friction. And it could cause the action to feel lighter and you lose a bit of control. What would you do to make it have more friction or less friction? So if say this center was too tight mm -hmm. and it was too too difficult and you you're having to put too much force to lift this hammer mm -hmm. there are basically two options you can lubricate it so the f you can lubricate the felt mm -hmm. or this pin you can replace with a bigger one yeah bigger or smaller yeah how do you take that out with a a tool that kind of looks like a torture device. I don't have it with me, but I could show you. It's uh, it's a punch, so it's got a tiny little pin on it, and you punch the brass center pin oh out. Another way to make it heavier is to add weights, right? To the keys? Yes, yeah, so if we're talking about weight, um, I mean, friction is a big part of how the action feels. So if you, if your friction, the parts that create friction are all adjusted, um, almost every key in a piano has some sort of lead weight. So this key has two lead weights and it's to counter the weight of the hammer, essentially. Mm -hmm. You could have larger hammers or, well, lighter hammers or heavier hammers and it's usually counterbalanced by weights in the key. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to have a lighter action, you could put a lead weight, add a lead weight, which would help you play the key. Mm -hmm. The only concern is that when I play the key and I want the key to come back up, which you do very quickly in mm -hmm. order to repeat the note, 
if you have too much lead here, the key is going to be a little sluggish coming mm -hmm. back up. So it's, it's heavier, like, but it's not. It's a back up. it's a weird thing. Yeah, the the touch might feel heavier, but the key might actually be slower in returning. So the best way to make it feel heavier would be to adjust things here. You can. The key. Yes, you can add weight to your hammer to oh, make to it heavier. Hammer. You could do that. How would you do that? Um, you could get a new hammer that's heavier. Mm -hmm. Or you can, and I've done this, you can actually drill a hole in the hammer molding, which is the wooden part of the hammer, mm -hmm. and insert a piece of lead solder. Solder? Yes. You're not soldering it, it's just lead. Okay. So you drill solder. a hole, you put this piece of lead in there, you kind of squeeze the lead so that it doesn't wobble out, and you've added, you know, uh, half a gram or something to your hammer, mm -hmm. which translates to, it's like a five to one mm -hmm. ratio. So if you add half a gram to your hammer, you're going to add about two and a half grams to your touch weight or your down weight. Because the, the way it works is basically like a five to one ratio. Dust bunnies in here. This piano is clean. This, this is like as good as it gets. <laughs> Don't clean the piano, like inside the piano, like leave the strings and the dampers alone. You can wipe off the keys mm -hmm. and the case and stuff like that. But like don't, you don't need to clean the strings mm -hmm. or get in there and dust. Mm -hmm. Like when you bring your tuner, your technician over, have them do that. We have special tools. Uh -huh. I wouldn't want a piano owner to mess something up. Just take a towel or... Yeah, yeah. Dust it off. Dust it off, damage your dampers or, you know, clean the strings with some sort of... Uh, liquid cleaner or something like that. Windex. Windex. <laughs> uh, what about outside of the piano? Um, the best thing is just to, well, to dust it if it gets dusty mm -hmm. with a, like a feather dust mm -hmm. or something soft. If you have um, streaks, uh, like handprints or something mm -hmm. on it, you can use a soft cotton cloth and um, you can wet it with just a little bit of water, like mm -hmm. damp. Okay. Not wet, but damp. And even a little bit of like... Uh, hand detergent. Okay. Just something to, to kind of cut mm -hmm. the, you know, the grease and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It depends. So I think certain factories put more effort into the finished product uh, where you wouldn't have much to do mm -hmm. in the first couple weeks or months or something, depending on how much it's being played. But other other pianos have maybe a little bit more finishing work to do or say you play a piano in a showroom or somewhere and it sounds really really nice mm -hmm. you bring it home into a put it in a corner of a mm -hmm. room and it sounds different that happens a lot um, so oftentimes pianos do need to be voiced for their environment so if you have a really really big piano in a small room it could be overwhelming and you can try to sort of mellow it down um, give it a little sweeter tone. You don't need like a concerto piano in, in your living room. Yeah, yeah. Unless your living room is <laughs> ridiculously big. You do have to realize that a certain instrument in a certain space has its intrinsic qualities mm -hmm. that you don't want to change too much. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's a line that sometimes you can't Cross, um, but there are there are things that you can do to make every one of those pianos feel Here. more comfortable. Is it bugging you? <laughs> <laughs> not mine. Not, not mine either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I took a pencil out of this earlier, and I found sandwiches and uncooked pasta. There's a paper There's clip. Two paper clips in there. Yeah. And that one. They're Can not. I take it out? Yeah, sure. They ain't hurt nobody. Yeah. I have it tuned regularly. Uh -huh. Like every year, maybe? Once a year? Yeah. Only? Well, that's on a piano that you don't maybe use so much. Okay. Like, if it's kind of a piece of furniture and you're not playing it every year, like once a year is fine. Okay. Uh, for you, uh -huh. more often. Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
twice a year, three times a year, uh, four times a year, something like that. Mm -hmm. But regularly, so it doesn't skip a whole year or whole mm -hmm. seasons without being maintained. Mm -hmm. The, the challenge in designing pianos is with designing smaller pianos because you're compromising with the length of the keys, with the length of the strings, that's mm -hmm. a compromise. Designing a really good nine foot piano is, well, it's a challenge, uh -huh. but it's not a compromise. Say, say you have a, like this is a fairly small grand piano, mm -hmm. and if you were to compare this to a nine foot, a concert grand piano, um, your highest notes, 88 to probably somewhere over here, so just above middle C, that hardly changes. Mm -hmm. So the string lengths are really very similar. Mm -hmm. It's when you get, you know, to middle C and below that you get much longer string mm -hmm. lengths and much longer bass strings. That the three factors of pitch are uh, length, diameter, and tension. Mm -hmm. So to compensate for a shorter length, you have to have more mass or thicker, yeah. It, it would affect a little bit of the, the action because um, smaller pianos, smaller grand pianos, uh, the keys are shorter. So if you have larger pianos, like seven foot, nine mm -hmm. foot pianos, the keys are longer, which is a distinct advantage to the pianist. Okay. Um, because there's, you have more leverage, mm -hmm. and when you look at your hand position, uh, you're playing some keys much closer to the balance point of mm -hmm. the key. Oh, I see. You. Because it's easier to play always on the edge. Yes, yes. So if you have a shorter key. Mm -hmm then the difference between playing here versus playing here is quite drastic because you're moving much closer to the balance point of the key. Right. If you have a longer key where the balance point is further away. You have more room. Yes. And the difference between here, playing here in the key and here in the key is less because you have a lot more leverage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like there's a light that went yeah, on. I never thought of it yeah. that way. So if you play small, tiny, little upright pianos, mm -hmm. the keys are like, the entire key is mm -hmm. really short. Mm -hmm. But if you go up to a seven foot piano, you have longer keys. Mm -hmm. um, and a nine foot piano, probably even longer keys. The usual advice that I give to people looking to purchase pianos, especially secondhand pianos, is I mean, give yourself a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You don't want to make a rushed decision and then maybe regret it. Mm -hmm. um, you want to try a bunch of different pianos. Not to the point where you get sort of overwhelmed and confused, but to the point where like once you sit down and you and you play a piano, you, you kind of know very quickly mm -hmm. that this I like this piano. Mm -hmm. um, so time is it was really crucial. Um, the other thing is, if it is a secondhand piano, mm -hmm. have a piano tuner or technician check it out. Mm -hmm. So if you really like a piano, you know, and you're going to spend whatever, you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars, hire someone for an hour or whatever just to look at the piano mm -hmm. to make sure there's no structural issues, to make sure there's something that, you know, you'd maybe you'd have to replace the hammers in a year. So right. just just so you know sort of what to expect and there's no sort of major flaws. Other things are hammers, uh, do they need to be filed or reshaped? Mm -hmm. Do they need to be replaced at some point? Do the keys wiggle back and mm -hmm. forth or the key bushings worn? And is all of this work worth it if there's too much? Yes. Piano technicians rebuild and refurbish pianos all the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of time it's worth it mm -hmm. to put new strings on a piano or new hammers or new damper felt or new key bushings. There are things that wear and tear mm -hmm. with playing and it totally makes sense to, to replace those. Um, and it would be a good idea to have uh, an idea of the cost of something like that. So if you are purchasing a secondhand piano, well then I also need to invest 
in the next two years mm -hmm. on this type of work and how much is that going to cost right. and that could even be a you know bargaining you say I really want this piano mm -hmm. but I know I'm going to have to invest mm -hmm. in some new in some sort of refurbishing mm -hmm. what about pedals pedals um, things that pianists should know about in terms of what to do what not to do uh, how to identify what's wrong with a pedal. Mm -hmm. Is it oftentimes the pedal itself or something here? That's a, a good question. Um, the damper pedal, the, the right pedal, which we use all the time, um, it's a fairly simple mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if we have a problem with pedals, probably easy to fix. Mm -hmm. And the same with the, the left pedal, it uh, does different things on different pianos. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fairly simple mechanism and linkage that controls the unicorda pedal or the mm -hmm. soft pedal. Mm -hmm. um, the middle pedal, again on different pianos, does different things. On most quality grand pianos, it's the sostenuto pedal. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, do you ever use that pedal? I do. You do? Okay. <laughs> I do. I use it a lot in things I write. Kind of make okay. it go out of my way to write with it. Okay. So the interesting thing about that is that the middle pedal or the sostenuto pedal um, can be problematic to work on. Um, and it's literally so if, we, if I have a checklist mm -hmm. of things that I'm going to do to a piano, mm -hmm. da, 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 sostenuto pedal, very last thing. <laughs> Almost to the point where like, nah. Um, I mean, some, they're because they're designed differently, mm -hmm. different manufacturers, and a lot of manufacturers when it's set from the factory, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. There are some other pianos where it's a totally different design, and uh, depending on the piano's mood that day, <laughs> it'll work or it won't work. Um, I wonder if I can show you how it works. Oh, yeah, later. Just like that, just slide it out. These are all damper levers. So, the back end of the key, mm -hmm is that when we're playing it, it just lifts the damper lever and it lifts the damper off the string. And this is that big damper tray. Mm -hmm. So when we push the damper pedal, we're lifting every single damper at mm -hmm. the same time. Now, the middle pedal operates this sostenuto rod. Oh. And on the bottom here, there's um, like almost like a blade that sort of rotates towards the dampers. Each uh, damper mechanism, there is this tab, mm -hmm. which is called the sostenuto tab. And so if none of the dampers or none of the keys are being played and none of the dampers are elevated, mm -hmm. the sostenuto rod We'll it's not catching yeah, anything. Yeah, it'll swing clear of the sostenuto tabs. But I'm, if, say, I'm playing this You note, play that note. This. And I, we push down the sostenuto this pedal. This tab gets caught above the rod. Yes. <gasps> and so, yeah, again, all of the other notes you will play, just like normal, and the, the dampers won't catch. That's amazing. Yeah. And it's hard to fix because... Um, the, of the tabs themselves or the rod? The, the troubles with this are that some pianos, this sostenuto rod mm -hmm. is on the action. So when you take the action out, the sostenuto rod isn't there and you can't see how it interacts with the dampers. Oh, I see. So it's difficult to identify the problem. Yes. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, while we're at it. Yeah, I guess, you know, treat treat them as not a piece of furniture, I guess, but uh, an instrument, um, you know, to put your coffee cups on your piano. Um, I may have done that to my piano at home on occasion. Uh, but if something happens to my piano, I can fix it. <laughs> uh, I mean, do treat them with respect and do try your best to have them maintained. 
Mm -hmm. um, and do, especially if you know you need the piano to be as good as possible, develop a good relationship with a, someone you trust, a technician. It right. may take a while. Um, I don't like the idea of using those services where you just, you know, you go online or you call and they send, it's a big company and they just send someone mm -hmm. to your home because it's someone different right. and you don't know them. Um, as pianists do, like technicians develop relationships with the instruments and mm -hmm. they have their own little quirks. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, have someone that you trust tune your piano regularly. Take care of your pianos. Take care of your pianos. Just like you take care of yourself yeah. and your family. Well, yeah. thanks, David. Yeah. Thanks, Nari. This was amazing. Cool. I'm glad. I had fun. I like what we did here. Yeah. Oh, just let's go. Let's go have lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leave it like this. <laughs>